Just to please Allah recites this, then in his light, left, front, back, up, down, all the creations of Allah keeps reciting. Has everything, everything, every creature that Almighty has created will recite the Talbiya with Him. You are going to Hajj to only please and satisfy Allah and probably give the travel agency 280,000 or 310,000 taka. Great and wise expert in Hadith, Zakaria Rahmatullahi Alaihi, said that if you spend one taka for Hajj to please Allah, Allah the most merciful will reward you with the blessings of giving away at least 40 million taka. If I ask you now that how much will you donate to this madrasa in Jerjeripara, will you answer 5 lakh or 10 lakh or 10 million? Anyone in here? I don't think we can get any answer like that. But if you spend one single taka to please Allah for the purpose of Hajj, Allah the most merciful will give you at least blessings of 40 million taka to a masjid or madrasa. While you are in Hajj, you will face hardship. No matter how good your room is, you will face hardship. If you maintain patience, Allah will give you the blessings of joining Jihad. Subhanallah. You shall have to work to perform Hajj, won't you? Whether you are walking or using a bus, car or a plane, making one single footstep for Hajj will reward you by 100,000 folded. Subhanallah. If we pass away, die while performing Hajj, and wish that may Allah take us to Him in there, then until the end of the world, you will be rewarded every time Hajj is performed. A Haji will wake up in the judgment day reciting Labbaik, Labbaik, Labbaik means here I am my Lord. Have you got the idea of the blessings that you will be rewarded if you perform Hajj only to please Allah? Allah will increase your wealth. It is testified by the Holy Hadith from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He said that Tabi'u bayna al-hajj wal umrah fa'innahuma yanfiyan al-faqra wa zunub Allah says that He will increase your wealth and forgive your sins. Do we all want our wealth to increase? Do we want? Of course, by Allah's grace, we should. How else would we donate to the madrasa and masjids or go to Hajj? You should want. That is why you should understand Hajj. Before you go to Hajj, go with a good person. If you go with a reliable person, a good person, he will help you and guide you through the things that benefit you. He will help you bring peace to your mind and help you in all the steps of Hajj. And if you go with an incompetent person like me, he will spoil both his hajj and your hajj. Therefore, look for a good reliable person to go to hajj with. A good person will encourage you, help you make up your mind. Making up mind for hajj is very important. Encouragement is needed so that hardship cannot affect us. We shall need courage. We shall go to hajj only to please and satisfy Allah, nothing else. I have no other intention. 
So the first thing you need to do for Hajj is making up your mind. The second thing is, as said by the greatest Islamic experts, there are three things you should be taking with you while you are going to Hajj. There are Assalamu Alaikum, Assalamu Alaikum, Assalamu Alaikum, this way. Not Salam Alaikum, not this way. Salam Alaikum, the proper way. Assalamu Alaikum, Assalamu Alaikum. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon you. Not Salam Alaikum, which means you die, may you die. You should never hope for anyone to die. Assalamu Alaikum. Say Salam more and more. So as it is said by the wise experts, you should say Salam more and more. Then you should not be miserly. You mustn't be miserly. All your wealth are given by Allah. By Allah. Spend it to please Allah. By feeding and helping the Hajis, the guests of Allah. You should share things you like with your companions. Even when you want to drink tea, take them with you. Don't be miserly. Spend open-handed because Allah is the one who has given you this wealth. And Allah is the only one who can increase it for you. The third thing, you should always keep yourself calm. Keep yourself calm in all the situations. Even if someone does something wrong to you, you should not tend to get revenge. Be patient for Allah. Forgive for Allah. Keep yourself calm only to please Allah. These are the three things. To say salam more and more, not be miserly and spend for Allah, and keep yourself calm in all situations. Honorable Hajiz of Ali's son may say that we are saying it intentionally, so that the Tafas agency won't face any problems when they give us a bad room. No, it's not like that. Thanks to Allah, Alhamdulillah, we have arranged great hotels for you, great hotels, four-star hotels in both Mecca and Medina Sharif. By Allah's wish, you will stay in a good place, eat good food, and wear good clothes. Inshallah, you will be satisfied. Depend on only Allah for everything. Allah will keep you safe and happy. Allah will help you do your Hajj. No one else can help you. There are three verses of Hajj. First is making a niyah and wearing ihram. Second. The first verse is to wear a haram making a niyah. Second, in either 10th or 11th or 12th of Zulhaj, before the sun goes down, you must circumambulate the Kaaba. The circumambulating the Kaaba seven times is called Tawaf. The third one, in 9th Zulhaj, staying in the great field of Arafah. If you even reach the field of Arafah, whether you are ill or healthy, if you simply reach Arafah, you are now a Haji. These are the three verges. Making near, circumambulating or Tawaf, and staying in Arafah. These are the three verges. Hajj has six wajibs or must be doing task. Hajj has six wajibs. One is staying in Muzdalifa. Staying in Muzdalifa is wajib. Another is throwing stones to shaitan. To throw stones to shaitan is wajib. These are the two. Please listen carefully. Third one is offering sacrifice or qurbani, specific animals to pay gratitude to Allah. These are the three. Fourth, to shave your head or trim your hair. Shave your head or trim your hair. Both men and women. But women should cut a fingertips length from their hair. It's wajib. She can get help from her husband or any women with her. But not in front of everyone after performing the sa'i between Safa and Marwa. No, not that way. We have seen many people doing it. And that is why we are saying, May Allah forgive us. Women should cut their hair inside a room. Another is, Sa'i of Safa and Marwa, from Safa to Marwa, from Marwa to Safa, this is Wajib, these are five. The next one is Tawaf e Beda. Those of us who will go to Mecca from faraway places like this, when we are leaving Mecca with the thought that we are now leaving the holy house of Allah and performing one last Tawaf, 
is called tawaf e beda it is wajib one is staying in muzdalifa one two is throwing stones to shaitan uh, some people say stoning shaitan does shaitan die when you throw stones to him we shall describe it later these are the two then offering qurbani three four is to shave your head or trim your hair these are four the fifth is performing sa'i between safa marwa and when returning from mecca the ending tawaf is the sixth how many farjas three one is wearing ihram doing niya second is in the ninth zulhaj staying in the field of arafa this is farz then on the 10th or 11th or 12th of zulhaj before sun goes down you must do the tawaf of allah's house is farz these are the three farz we got six wajibs one is staying in muzdalifa one is throwing stones to shaitan another is offering a sacrifice another is shave your trim your hair sa'i between safa and marwa and the last one is tawaf to beda the ending tawaf these are the six wajibs what have we got here today we shall go to hajj for nothing but to please allah we also came to know the three farjes and six wajibs of hajj we also got three things that we should take with us assalamu alaikum more and more salam younger elder wiser dumb everyone everyone say salam more and more then not to be miserly spend to please allah feed hajis for allah you don't have to feed me of course those of us who have wealth should take more with them spend it for allah's satisfaction and allah will increase your wealth allah will increase your health and to keep calm and be patient in every situation keep calm these are the three things you should take with you so now we know that there are three farjes of hajj six wajibs and there are three things we should be taking with and we should make pure intention and go to hajj only to please allah those who are going for the first time to hajj there are three types of hajj hajj has three types there are three types of hajj the first one is hajj qiran one is hajj ifrad and another one is hajj tamattu these are the three types of hajj those going for the first time in their life it is my suggestion for them that you should perform tamattu because it is much easier those who are alims those who know and those who can work hard let them do qiran those who are going on someone else's behalf those who are doing hajj for someone else they can do ifrad hajj is of three types tamattu qiran or ifrad we are going to allah's house everyone is going different person has different types of niya you can go either with the niya of tamattu or the niya of ifrad or the niya of qiran those who are new it's best to do tamattu those who have done hajj before those who know those who are expert it's best for them to do qiran and those who are doing hajj in exchange they should do ifrad since today is the first day we shall discuss a little about tamattu inshallah tomorrow we shall inshallah talk about qiran the next day inshallah about ifrad the next day inshallah we shall talk about the ziyarah of madina manwara which i think is very necessary to visit muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam